stage, I am promised uh, a, a traditional Bavarian beer so drinking song, perhaps at the end of the session or maybe tonight at the gala dinner, uh, to make up for the fact that they won't be singing and dancing to start this session. But, uh, but ne nevertheless, it's going to be quite an interesting and lively session here, and uh, we're glad you can join us to talk about premium manufacturing in, in Mexico. Uh, first of all, for any of you who don't know me, my name is Christopher Ludwig. And I'm, I'm actually here in a slightly different ro role, which I'll explain uh, in a minute, uh, as a content director of, of Automotive Logistics and our, our, uh, our mother brand, uh, Ultima Media. Um, uh, I'll explain that perhaps a little bit later, because I want to introduce you to someone uh, as soon as she's actually here. Um, I hope you're enjoying the conference so far, as Louis mentioned. I mean, we, we had a great start last night, and, and obviously the, the mariachi band in the great first session. Um, most of you, you should, have been, you should be getting your, your traditional skulls as well. Um, if, if you haven't gotten one, uh, please get it from, from the registration desk. Uh, it is a self-portrait of me, actually, although it's usually what I look like the morning after one of our gala dinners, so you might recognize it a bit more clearly then. Uh, but no, we do encourage you to wear them. It's obviously you know, quite beautiful and uh, get into the spirit here uh, in, in Mexico. So I thought that first session um, did a great job of, of sort of laying out the complexities and, and challenges that, that we're facing here in Mexico, not least with the uncertainty around NAFTA and, and the negotiations that are, that are happening. Um, but obviously there was also a lot of hope and positivity expressed, not least by Mrs. Espinoza from the Secretary of the Economy who said she made it clear there'll be no eliminating Mexico's competitiveness and a mature industry um, through whatever happens in the negotiations through a trade, a change in trade or tariffs or what it might be. Obviously, they're working hard to avoid any, any, any damaging trade, but, but Mexico um, is, is strong in a way to go beyond what anything can, can, can come out of those negotiations. And I think that sort of speaks to the, the theme uh, of our morning session here in terms of, of the development of, of premium manufacturing uh, in Mexico. Um, obviously, it's part of the shift we've seen um, here from Mexico being a low-cost center and supplier mainly to, to the U.S. Uh, and Canada to now increasingly uh, a premium hub uh, with higher value products and complex uh, manufacturing uh, capable of serving the world. And of course, that has been the case with brands like Lincoln and Cadillac, and we're seeing more SUV production uh, in Mexico. Um, but, but we're well represented in this panel by some of the most obviously important premium manufacturers in the world uh, who have very recently or in the process of, of launching in Mexico. So I'm, I'm proud to, to introduce the panel to you. We're going to hear first from Peter Coltai, who's the Director of Production Control and Logistics for Audi Mexico, of course, with the plant in San Jose, Chiapas. Uh, Peter, thank you again. Welcome back to the conference. Uh, we'll then also hear from uh, his, uh, his friendly competitor and peer, uh, Dr. Carl Friedrich Koch, the Vice President of Production Control and Logistics for plant San Luis Potosí in Mexico for the BMW Group. And joining us as well is a logistics provider, no stranger to serving premium manufacturers and, and, and many other kinds as well, Volker Voss, Vossler, who's the Vice President of Operations for Mexico at Schnellecke Logistics. And I think he sat, on the t he sat up here with two of his customers, and afterwards he can tell us which one he likes better, uh, or at least which one is worse, whatever, whatever the, the case might be. Um, those of you eagle-eyed probably in the audience might even be able to find some people working on a project for some, some other premium manufacturers, some, namely Infinity and Mercedes-Benz, perhaps not quite ready to get on stage, but uh, obviously there is a lot happening uh, here around uh, premium brands, and I think what we want to touch upon here this morning is the fact that this has implications, of course, for the supply chain. It's not just about an expensive premium product. Uh, it's, it's, it's to do with built-to-order processes. It's complex order management. It's you know, increased deviate, um, variations and how you manage that from a production control standpoint, uh, from material flow, and uh, with various components from around the world. And of course, as is the case with certainly the manufacturers we have here, uh, serving very global markets. Of course, the U.S. being important, but uh, as we'll no doubt here, Audi serving Europe, BMW with plans to, to ship you know, many, many markets uh, ac across the world. Of course, when you, when, you, when you take those challenges and you put them in Mexico, um, you, you are faced with a, with a sometimes difficult situation, be it around border crossing, be it around some security issues, could be around things like broad, uh, broadband speed and telecommunications and, and, and other challenges that, that many, many would face here. 
but, but clearly uh, the proof is that these brands are here and producing and successfully or, or, or will be successful and more are coming. Um, so we, we can learn more about how to overcome some of those challenges, how to work with your supply base, how to work with your logistics providers, uh, perhaps to, to train and develop um, methods that might not have been so common uh, in Mexico before, but which are very important when we're talking about the type of advanced manufacturing. And um, I, I think it's important as well because this sort of manufacturing does, to an extent, also um, transcend NAFTA. NAFTA is key to it, but it, it, it goes well beyond uh, just a purely North American perspective. So that's some of what we're going to get a chance to discuss. We're going to have our usual format. We'll, have, we'll hear from each presenter first, and then we'll have time for Q&A. Uh, can I remind you all again uh, about the app, which Louis mentioned in the first session? Uh, if you haven't downloaded it, please, please take a, a few minutes to download it, because once you do, you can um, interact with us a bit more digitally as well. Uh, you can send questions to me, and I'll, and I'll address them to the panel if you're too shy to ask them. We have polling that we'll keep doing uh, throughout the conference, and you could obviously check check the schedule and everything that's going on. Just a reminder once more, there's, there's how you download it. Um, so take a few minutes to do that. Uh, we think it's worthwhile and it, it'll sort of help enhance your experience here. So thanks again for that. I'd like to now invite Peter to kick us off. Thanks, Peter. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter Koltai. I am very proud to be here and uh, I would like to present you uh, in the name of Audi Mexico and in the name of a very hardworking and at the end very successful production control and logistics team. Uh, everything what we have done in the last few years and also to give you a little bit of a, a view about that how we see the future. I'm also very proud to be here, to be together on the same podium with one of our main competitors. Uh, it's uh, always something special uh, to be able to present uh, two very successful companies somewhere in abroad as well, and then uh, uh, show you all the differences and also many, many similarities between uh, this business uh, yeah, business uh, uh, competitors. It is now the third time, the time in this uh, conference. At the first time, I have shown you that we will come to Mexico. At the second time, I have shown you we are already in Mexico. We have started with the production. And now I will show you we are here. We are having an influence on the industry here in Mexico and what is the view of that, what we would like to do in Mexico. I think you will, you will feel and you will see how proud I am about all that what we have achieved. And uh, for me personally, it's also a very important point. Um, probably this is my last time that I speak at this conference. Uh, many of us came from Germany with a with a, clear, with a clear task to do. We have achieved it, we have built up this factory, and now many of us will have new challenges in our fantastic company at the Audi AG. I will show you the major logistic areas of Audi Mexico. You will see, you will have a good view about it, what we do. I will show you also, according to the to the topic of this conference, what are the initiatives of the future and that I will do in the example of our mother company of Germany, uh, from Germany, the Audi AG. I will talk about a little bit about the major local factors which influence how the digitalization of the logistics Mexico will change maybe or will have an influence on Mexico. I will talk about my, our visions and then I will give you a little view about it, how we see the future. September 2012, we have decided that we will build a factory in San Jose, Chiapas. Um, I think uh, Google Earth got to know San Jose, Chiapas also at this moment uh, when we have decided that our factory will be built there. 
And this was also the moment when I have taken the responsibility first to plan a logistics and the production control system for this new factory, the first factory outside of Europe from Audi. And uh, it was in a timeline already that for one year long we were searching very hardly the best location for this new factory. We have started with the first stone ceremony on the 4th of May 2013. And uh, the first, of course, what we do, we train our personnel and uh, we are working on the supplier development. So as a, a clear consequence of this one, we have opened our training center in 2014. And then we have opened our factory on the 30th of September 2016. The year 2017 was already the year of a full production. And we have achieved our targets and we became more successful than we have planned to be. We have produced 158,550 Q5 and please give me the chance now that I give a little bit of uh, um, advertisement for this fantastic product which we produce in Mexico for the whole world. So this beautiful product is going out to the whole world. Thank you. But believe me, this was a very, very difficult and hard way. Many of us became absolutely on the personal limit to achieve this. And uh, we have done something what we have never done before in our professional life. We had also many challenges to, be, uh, to face. It was our first factory outside of Europe. It was the first Audi factory outside of Europe, which is completely only uh, steered and managed by Audi. We have many partners outside of Europe, in China or in different areas uh, in the world, but this was the first factory which we have built up alone outside of Europe. And we, became, we came to a completely new country for us new workers, new language, new culture. We had to know, we had to get to know every of these very important factors. We have done the whole situation a little bit more difficult that we have taken a completely new product which hasn't been produced until then anywhere else in any other Audi factory. And to top this all, we have decided to make a factory which has completely new systems. But we have achieved it. We have the first Audi factory outside of Europe in full operation. We have qualified more than 5,000 Mexican employees which are working completely according to the Audi philosophy. We have achieved that we have a product which has received many, many prizes already along the world, whole world and it's a logistics conference. We have achieved a completely digital logistics with our new systems for this operation. I would like to show you now our factory at San Jose Chapa and give you a little bit of an impression about it, how our workers feel at this factory. <laughs> Salimos de casa para llegar a nuestro segundo hogar. 
un lugar donde avanzamos juntos con una misma visión. Con diferentes talentos, con creatividad, con dedicación. Cada día aumentamos más nuestra experiencia y Every day we increase continuo. our expertise, our learning, our knowledge. Juntos logramos la excelencia y alta calidad. Together we have been able to achieve excellence and high quality. Somos líderes en tecnología. We are technology leaders. Cada detalle lo hacemos nuestro. Because every detail is ours. We look for perfection. Algunos le llaman trabajo. Some, some people call them work, pasión. we call it passion. A few facts about the logistics of this factory. We use a trailer yard where we receive all the materials from the North American region. We have more than 300 trailer receives per day. We are using a part of the digital logistics here as well. We are steering, we have a steering system and the telematic control for all these receives. And we can unload all the parts from this trailer yard Uh, regarding to our production demand. We have also an own container yard. The same steering system we use as we use it for the trailer yard and the same result that all containers can be unloaded demanding, uh, regarding to the demands of the production. The goods receives. We have nearly 3,500 small packages what we receive per day and nearly 700 big boxes what we receive per day. We have a live monitor and a digital control over the operations of the goods in area and we have a permanent control about the material flow in the receiving process and also in the process of uh, taking everything into the storage area. One of the major points, we have seen it in Mexico, that you have to see, you have to have a lot of focus and inventory processes. We have 170 suppliers from the North American region, mainly from Mexico. We have nearly 350 suppliers from Europe and a few suppliers from Asia. We are scanning everything what we have in the, our warehouse and we are doing permanent inventory where we always prove if everything is there where it should be and the result of that that uh, we do not have practically any deviation if we have any deviation mainly this is the content in the content of, uh, of a, uh, packaging we take with the help of a trailer station all our material to the line. So we do the line feeding through this trailer uh, system. We have also a digital route planning system which helps us to monitor if we are on time with all the deliveries to the line and we achieve also a 97% punctuality. We use for sequencing and for quitting technologies like pick by voice. We have about 180 picks per vehicle and uh, we achieve with this uh, support of systems 55 ppm rate, which is, we believe, for a factory we have, which has just uh, started to do serial production, a very good rate. We also use for some of our uh, parts pick by light 
And uh, in total, we manage a peak from 130,000. The line feeding, we have for each car to deliver 21 small packaging and about seven big packaging. We are tracking digitally all the way, all the packaging uh, to the point of use. And then, as a result, at any time, we can say they are all materials in the whole supply chain. We have an own FBU yard. We use trains to load all the cars. We load about 580 vehicles in a rail car per day. We have an RFID yard management. This uh, helps us also to see every time there are our finished products. And uh, as a result, we can track and trace all our deliveries. We use also trucks, about 150 vehicles per day we send uh, per truck. And uh, the RFID yard management helps us here as well to track and trace all our products. So the motto for this uh, uh, conference today is a vision for Mexico, driving change, building confidence, strengthening investment. That's from Luis. And we would like to show a little bit how we see the future of that. We are a production plant here in Mexico. Our mother company, the Audi AG, has a huge impact and influence on that, how we operate and what kind of technology do we have in this factory. So the future development will be driven all the time from our mother companies. And what is happening there? By 2025, more than 20 electric cars should be produced also in our German factories. And this has also a, a huge influence on our production technologies. The strategy of Audi to face the challenges of the digitalization is the smart factory. A part of the smart factory is the so-called smart logistics. I would like to show you now a few examples. What is happening in Europe? What we are doing in Europe? What, are in the, what you can see in the different German factories? What is a digital factory? We have a process knowledge and we have data availability. This is something what you have to cope with each other. You have a demand, you want to change something, you have data for that, you know how your process works, but you have to find a way. And the digital logistics and the digital factory gives you the possibility to do it. But it's still not the solution. The solution you have find yourself. It's very complex, very difficult, and it doesn't work uh, if you have some instructions, you have to work actually everything uh, what you are targeting. First example, we have a so-called quick check-in in, in uh, Germany. All the trucks, they are running into the factories. Uh, they are having already a data interface with the factory. If they cross uh, the borders of a distance to the factory, Already all the, the billing process and the booking process is to be started. And uh, the, result, the result of this technology that the truck can go immediately to get unloaded. It doesn't have to go to some uh, uh, central uh, positions where you have to book first the truck and then to have to have a look at the, all the loading list. The truck can go immediately to one of the buildings and can be started to be unloaded. In Germany, the automatic line feeding is also a process which is uh, very strongly in focus. Uh, they are different technological solutions. You see here one which we have in Ingolstadt, in uh, one of our new buildings uh, in operation. 
This, is, uh, this helps to use all the digital data to help the line feeding process. A second very important point, the so-called supermarket 2.5. At the moment, classically, in a supermarket, a man goes to the, to the store, a man goes to the different parts to pick them. The supermarket 2.0 changes it, and uh, different robotical solutions take the parts to the person who picks, and then it means that the guy hasn't have to move. You save many space, and also you save uh, many human time. Automatical forklifts are also under development. We have uh, in our factory in Ingolstadt a few examples for that, uh, how we try to develop and how we develop this technology. We have also some examples for our finished vehicle logistics. With this kind of solution, what you see here in Ingolstadt, we save many, many space. And uh, we can assure it that without any human resource, all the cars can be moved and can be taken into the sequence and can be prepared for loading on the tracks. Well, that's Germany. But what will be the future for Mexico? And I would like to say and point out, in my opinion, three very important factors, which will have a, a major impact about the development of digitalization in Mexico. I would like to have a look at you first about the inbound transport costs. If you look at Germany, and if you look at Mexico, we can hardly see a difference in the costs. This is, shows the competitiveness of Germany as well, but it shows also that in this industrial area, the prices are very, very similar in these both countries. So anything what helps you in Germany, that will help you in Mexico for the future as well. If you look at the in-house labor costs, we have a huge difference. According to this source, which I have taken, this is the Friedrich Ebert uh, Foundation, the hourly cost of a worker in Germany is 13 times higher than in Mexico. So what helps you in Germany in the in-house logistic with the digitalization, that will be very difficult to have a business case for that in Mexico. So this will be, for sure, a major impact. And the third one is a location. What you see there is a Google Earth uh, photo. The first one is our plant in San Jose, Chiapa. If you look at it, we have space. We have many space. We have more space than anywhere else with all our factories. If you look at our factory in Neckarsulm or Ingolstadt, there is no way for extension of these factories. They are in the middle of a town uh, Nekasum is even bordered by a river, so you don't have any chance to get with a factory uh, extension to solve any problems. You have to come out and then to solve all your problems with the existing surface. So this, these topics will have a major influence how we will use digital logistics or a smart factory solution in Mexico. We have visions, and I tell you also it is a vision because, as I said to you, we are just at the end of a ramp up. We became to a situation that we smoothly and stable run on our maximum capacity, and now we have to look into the future. What are we going to work at? One of my most important future pro uh, projects is to control all the supply chain. At the moment, we have a control in our supply chain for the different suppliers. But we do not have a central solution. When I have in one, with one person, with one uh, control tower, all the data what I need. We have defined a pilot. 
we have defined for that also a partner for a pilot, but we still do not have a total solution and a solution for the future. I expect many advantages of that one, also because it uh, helps us to optimize our supply chain. The second one is a mix of inbound and in-house logistics, smart packaging. In, our, in my previous presentations, you have seen that we have decided to set up a, a packaging pool where we have for all our packaging an RFID tag. And this RFID tag is also possible to get uh, written by a supplier. So if we have the required suppliers or the suppliers with whom we can do this, we can uh, change our inbound process from uh, uh, printing papers and then sending all the information via EDI to write all the needed information into this RFID text. We would like to have a, an accelerated goods in process and also a book in process. The next vision Autonomous transport. Our factory layout is a, an absolutely dream for this project. We do not have any uh, public streets between our supplier park and between our factory, between our buildings where we unload all the just-in-sequence parts. So here we have the best um, technological and infrastructure um, position to start this project. Here will be very difficult how we get a business case out of it. And the two European trends which I have shown to you, the supermarket 2.0 and the automatic line feeding. If the technology is already fixed and running well, then uh, it's just a question of business case to get it involved into the Mexican factory. If the business case is positive. Anyway, in, it doesn't matter in which direction digitalization goes. You will, have to, you will have to cope human resources and technology together. And our ambition is to continue to develop on an emotional way with a perfection the technology and the human connection. So ladies and gentlemen, what we want and what we have as a target to contribute to the development of Mexico with all our knowledge what we have and to give for our people, to our human resources, the best future what a company can give in Mexico. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so. muchas gracias, Peter. That that was very interesting. A lot of great detail there. It's been it's been great to have you at the conference the last three years, as we've gotten to really see the progression of, of this plant uh, and, and and all these plans come into action and to see the fruit of, of the labor. And you managed not to lose all your hair in the process either. So that's pretty impressive, I think, considering as you mentioned the hard labor that has had to go into it. But the result is is, is great, and I think it uh, the digital processes that that Audi has, has put into place both in Germany, but also what paves the, paves the way for, for what 
is happening and can happen in the future in Mexico, certainly very interesting and very relevant to, to the companies uh, across the sector here. So thank you. Thanks for your participation again the last three years, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to continuing to follow the journey here. Uh, next up, it's, it's probably a little unfair because Peter can always come uh, you know, with, with a plant that's built and now he has production and, and vehicles rolling off the line and really beautiful videos to kind of go with it. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Dr. Koch has brought any videos of, of the construction site or a field this time. Uh, we'll save those for future presentations again. But nonetheless, this is BMW and Audi may compete in every way, but here it's not. And uh, we, we think this, uh, that, that another update on what's happening with BMW and San Luis Potosi, uh, we're, we're sure is going to excite all of you. And so I'd like to invite Kafri de Koch uh, from BMW. Thank you. Where is he? So, buenos dias. Very welcome from my side here to the Automotive Logistics Conference. It's a pleasure for me to stay here and give for the second time a presentation about the all new plant at BMW San Luis Potosi. At that point, also, congratulations to Peter Kolta. He has definitely the more and the better videos today. <laughs> when I was here the two years ago, invited by Luis and Christopher for the first time, the first title was Vamos a Mexico, because at that time there were just 100 people sitting together in a group project in Munich, planning, designing the all new factory. Now and today, with 900 people working for BMW within San Luis Potosi, and an additional three to 4,000 construction workers working every day on the site, I think I surely can say Estamos in Mexico. So the topic for today was logistics challenges for premium car manufacturer. Here I want to focus, of course, for BMW premium car manufacturing. But I didn't know the presentation of Peter before. It's, I think, very similar challenges and also to some extent challenger, uh, similar approaches. Starting a little bit about BMW and the actual site. Last year, again, was a sales record for BMW. We grew by roughly 4%, which will mean at an overall number of 2.4 million cars, roughly, that we need as BMW crew each year an additional 100,000 units of capacity worldwide. BMW has a strategy of saying production follows the market, and we say for general three regions. We have a distribution market, of course, in Europe and Central EMEA, and we have quite a lot of plants over there. In the last 10, 15 years where we grew, we're on the one hand side in the Asian markets, and we introduced two large plants in Shenyang in China. And last but not least, uh, the NAFTA market overall. We increased heavily in capacity in our existing plant in Spartanburg, ramped it up to 450,000 units per year, making it the biggest plant of BMW network overall. And investing in a new plant in San Luis Potosi. Final word at that point also to electrified. We had a 65% in increase of PHEVs and BEV vehicles the last year, up to a total of more than 100,000 units. If you compare that to Tesla, which is overall in the market, you may recognize that BMW is even the bigger producer and seller of electric cars worldwide. What's the status of the plant? We require the capacity. 900 people are working there. Very close. In 2019, the all new plant in San Luis Potosi will add an additional 175,000 units of car capacity to the BMW production network. You see here an actual picture. The landscape is roughly three square kilometers, which is really a lot. 
At the beginning, we just built buildings on 30% of the area. So we are happy and prepared for further enlargements. Our overall target, Mexico is not a low-cost plant, nothing really low-cost or whatsoever. It's the most sustainable, most efficient, and most competitive uh, plant within the BMW Group network. We are competitively, we want to be content, competitive outside, but we are also competitive within our production network. So coming to the topic, Mexico has a strong reputation and a long time experience in car production. What are the logistics challenge for BMW Group premium car manufacturing in a country like Mexico? To make it overall, I would need much more than 15 minutes, so just give me the highlights from my point of view. The first challenge, BMW Premium means excellence in product quality and driving ahead for innovation. There is no compromise on product quality. The BMW customer wants to have a premium car and he's not willing to make any deduction on, reduction on that if the car comes from Mexico. So for logistics itself, it's a part of it, ensure a superior part quality over the global inbound supply chain and within the plant. Having the same for the finished vehicles going globally out again in the worldwide distribution market. And with regard to innovations, process excellence and change control during running production. We are not just changing the car every seven years, we are quite frequently changing it. And in a running production, you have to have really everything in the, under control from program, from change control over the entire supply chain to keep track with that. What is our overall approach to that? We have a strategy specially designed for BMW plant San Luis Potosi, which is of course based on the BMW group strategy number one next. And as I mentioned already, the next leading plant, customer-oriented, sustainable, lean, innovative premium with every car produced in plants on Luis Potosi, we want to exceed the expectations of our customers. What do we do specific? We have uh, see a competitive advantage here we name Mexican excellence, bringing together the cultures of passion and perfection here together in a very specific way. And I have to say, without going into stereotypes, but really bringing the strength of both cultures together. Below that, we defined Beside the standard ramping up of the plant, some integration areas we call it as a kind of overarching projects for the entire plant we are working on, like the leadership culture, one inspired team, lean processes and a visual plant, of course an excellent plant installation, the next generation of the BMW production system, an excellent quality and risk management system and digitalization, where we see really seven strong points we want to incorporate here in the plant. And everything is based on the values we have at BMW, responsibility, appreciation, transparency, trust, and openness. They are the same in the BMW group, but the way how we roll it out and how we live it together will be specific for San Luis Potosi and the culture here of Mexico. The second challenge for premium car manufacturing, and it's a little bit more specific to logistics, premium means individuality, and as a result, built to order production. We have in the next generation of the three series, we already communicated that this will be the first product for San Luis Potosi. We have more than 10 billion variants of cars to be produced for the individual customers. There's no chance at all 
to make them on stock. And we see some, let's say, standard car manufacturer with two or three variants of seats having in racks, and you take the appropriate one out. We have more than 1,000 variants of seats. They have to produce in a, be produced in a sequence, and without the right seat in the sequence, we will not be able to make the car or at least have a lot of rework. So build to order means that we have to comply with very complex processes within the plant. We have very complex inbound processes and demanding, as a result, demanding a high level of process excellence. While we see the actual situation in Mexico, 3.5 million cars are built in Mexico already, but beside the colleagues of Audi, we think it is not premium car manufacturing, not built to order manufacturing, and we're bringing here a new level in, which are not used to it. The people, the service partners, the suppliers, and the logistics infrastructure are not used to that. Besides that, we foresee a highly competitive labor market with limited availability of experience and employees. It's always a risk that you get some fluctuation and your knowledge also moves out of the company again. So what do we see as a challenge for BMW, St. Louis, Pluto C, building premium cars? It's really to integrate this build to order process in Mexico, which generates a new level of complexity. Three examples, the processing of the complexity of parts variants and customer options are already told with more than 10 billion variants of the finished cars, more than 1,000 variants of seats to be produced in a sequence. We have to have the responsiveness and the flexibility because at BMW, the customer can change his order up to six days prior to start of the producing of his cars. So maybe he completely respecifies his car six days before. How do we keep track that the order is adjusted, that the entire supply chain is controlled for that? But then, after that, stability and robustness of the processes, these six days of orders then are fixed and have to be built and we have to have really precision in the supply chain that this material comes in and we do not lose capacity. So uh, what are the now the major requirements and the key enablers for all of that? On the left hand side, I brought again the issues with regard to product quality, change control and the build to order production. On the right hand side, I say, the entire process, we call it uh, order to delivery. What is the overall process from a customer order status 12 to status 100 when the customer receives back his car? I put in the requirements for BMW and for the partners. Yes, it is a complexity, but we have all the systems. BMW has all the processes. Living it here 500, 600 times a day means it's all about precision, reliability, and process excellence. I want to finish quickly with an overview of three highlights we want to implement in Plant St. Louis Potosi due to the specific requirements we have here in Mexico. It's just a selection of some more. The first thing is, and I think Peter had a similar issue, we strive for full transparency of the inbound supply chain. 90% of the volume for San Plan San Luis Potosi will come from in NAFTA and the focus of Mexico but the other 10% come from overseas and it comprises a huge variety of part number which will be sought from Europe, Eastern Europe, Asia, whatsoever. 
thinking of the order to delivery production, we really have to have control about this entire uh, inbound supply chain. We are setting up an integrated system for that, which allows us really to fully track and trace over the entire inbound supply chain, identify and visualize. Second step, analyze and predict what is the result based with our material we have on stock or in the inbound supply chain and other things, and then act and optimize. So that we are also prepared if we have major changes in the orders, if we have problems like ports are closed, natural catastrophes, you have a thunderstorm about the Gulf, what will be our problems one or two weeks ahead, and how can we cope for that? This is a major issue where we think in Mexico we're doing, a, we emphasize to have that available with SOP. Second thing is a little bit coming more down to the logistics within the plant. We decided to outsource the physical logistics to a logistics service provider. You see on the left-hand side all the cat categories from physical logistics, warehouse assembly, body in white and paint, SKD bodies, packaging, yard management, non-serious material, waste management, dispatch of finished vehicles. For non-serious material and waste management, we are already in operations. For the other things, we have nominated service providers and are now preparing the ramp up. We see here the risk that the workforce we get in Mexico is not really used to that complexity we also have in the plant. And we foresee the risk that we have some fluctuation also in there. But the reliability of the process is really of high importance. So we said we require a pre-qualification at the responsibility of the LSP, of course, but then we make a four-step BMW-specific qualification within our plant. We have a reserved area where we can train these people. We have a separated, integrated area of all our SAP systems where everything can be simulated and at the end of the week you push the bottom and the system is reset again. So here you can train and qualify the people without having any risk or harm to your operational systems. Within that concept we utilized quite some issues we utilized already in China and enlarged it. We have a model factory as I explained and we also use elements of gamification in order to bring the really complex stuff not too theoretically around. One thing I did not add is the entire thing with regard to digitalization or autonomization within the physical logistics. We have similar videos from Munich or for German plants. I agree with Peter at the moment that really does not make a business case we are within the labor costs of Mexico. But what we integrate here in our physical logistics system with the high effort is dependability, poker yoke, pick by light, pick by voice to really make the complex system work with not so much experienced and trained people. And the last highlight, same replies to digitalization of the outbound supply chain. We are aware that there is a risk of damages, of fraud whatsoever. We really want to have digitally control about the out entire outbound supply chain. And this is also an innovation we want to bring in here, connected distribution, full transparency, track and trace of, of the finished vehicles in between plants in Luis, Luis Potosi and the outside uh, distribution areas at all. Where we also have the, where we have the chance and the possibility to, to track each week uh, where it is.
but also have condition monitoring. Are there things opened? Are there things damaged already? Have this fully digitally available. So that's overall what I wanted to bring. What are, from our point of view, challenges for San Luis Potosi, challenges for premium manufacturing? I think it's both. It's a challenge for Mexico, but also a great opportunity to bring logistics here some amount of a higher, even higher level. So thank you very much for your attention. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you again, Dr. Koch. Again, another great presentation. And I think, um, as you just mentioned there, the ambition to, to bring the level of logistics to a higher level here uh, as, as, as manufacturing advances, as Mexico cements its, its competitive position and moves to the next level. If we're looking down the line to electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles and all the other kinds of technological shifts we're going to see, then the role that logistics will play there too is, is, is obviously really important. And um, uh, it's good to see and interesting to see so many of those um, BMW global processes being applied here in Mexico and to get our heads around some of the challenges here. But um, as Audi has demonstrated, it certainly can be done. And uh, again, we, we look forward to keeping up with this project. Um, our last presentation is from Vokul Vok uh, Vosler from, from Schnellica, again, a log logistic service provider with a lot of experience in plants and warehouses and addressing some of the very kind of process control issues I'm sure that the, our, uh, our other panelists have mentioned. So, Volker. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. Pleasure to be here. And um, yes, uh, I think now the fancy part finished, uh, and the poor service provider has to present its part. Uh, and um, well, our company is for 20 years already located here in Mexico, uh, same as I, so I don't have any excuse not to speak Spanish. Uh, but let's pretend we are a little bit in democracy. and. Uh, uh, Please raise your hand uh, for your preferred language. Who wants to hear this in English? Who wants to hear this in Spanish? Who wants to hear this in German? <laughs> okay, we continue in German, that's great. Yeah. No, it's uh, really difficult, but uh, I think I will switch to Spanish. Entonces, ahora tienen que poner sus headsets y todo eso. Y lo vamos a hacer en, en español. Sets because um, this presentation will be in Spanish. We are part of the projects you just saw. You know how successful they've been. Peter already showed us what uh, Audi is doing. Carl already mentioned what is happening with BMW in San Luis Potosí. It's great to be part of those projects. And I hope after my presentation, things will continue. So let me talk about Schnellke Logistics. It's a German company a logistics company with 75 years of experience in the business, which means that we don't necessarily do things wrong. We have 17,000 employees over all over the world. We're much smaller than my the former presenters. We're a logistics provider. And we're present throughout the world. We're present in Mexico. It's the largest region for our organization. We have over 7,000 employees in Mexico. These are the locations where we are working at. Where, and there are just a few of our customers described on the screen. What do we do? We are specialists in in-house logistics. The last smile. This is where I will focus on handling material inside our customers' factories, line feeding, 
and everything. And we're also near their factories with module assemblies and sequencing where we have a strength. I would say that it's our most relevant European service. We're also involved in packaging and services, not only for the automotive industry. We also do CKD, MKD, SKD, and distribution center management. Today, we are here to talk about premium car logistics. This is what we've done. And the question The question is what makes it, what makes this different? We apologize, we're having technical issues in the interpretation booth. The process is similar to what we already saw, and I believe that it is it resembles what we've heard. The main difference relates to certain standards and requirements. When you say premium, we refer to a company segment or a brand segment, which is creating added value or tangible, uh, an intangible value at a high price. Now, this is the explanation from Wikipedia, really. Perhaps it's a theoretical explanation. But in practical terms, the difference lies in the amount of requirements and the quality standards to be applied. Where are these quality standards applied? I could have included here endless items or topics for discussion. But as we know, build to order or monitoring, those are requirements. And they demand, they are more demanding than in other sectors. And that's what you do with high end products. As we've heard, it involves personnel skills, qualifications, which need to be higher. And we need to be focused. So the question is, what needs to be done in Mexico? How can we make progress? And where, where do the major benefits lie in? Let's talk about people now. We have to talk about people, systems, and processes, and the way in which they all interact. There is a major issue in Mexico, which is turnover or personnel retention and, and rotation. In the Bajio area in Mexico, there is a war for talent. There is a war for labor or for staff. And I'm not only talking about highly educated professionals, such as engineers. From my perspective, Mexico is not doing so bad. It's one of the countries with the highest number of engineers annually. Labor it is also required in operations, and that's where most problems lie in. And there needs to be an impact. Because I'm sure you're, you're wondering if premium or non-premium, it's just the same. It's the same issue when it comes to labor. But we also have to talk about training. We have to talk about investment in people. And in this case, in manufacturing of premium cars, Investment is larger, and we have to be specifically focused in handling these points.
this is where our recruitment and selection processes are, onboard processes are different. People are coming into the company in a different way. Leadership is also very important. So with the new generations, the, these changes have a major impact. There's another area in which we are focused, training and education. And I'm specifically talking about operators, the operators who use and who implement these systems. We have encouraged the use of simulators inside our training centers, and people are not there just uh, sitting down doing nothing. They work on the simulators and they practice. So when they reach the operations, uh, they are capable of reproducing whatever they learned. So we have focused on virtual training. This is an example of a forklift. This is equipment. This is a forklift using a simulator. And we also use Kinect or Xbox gamification where, where people carry out processes and they learn in a different way. This is great among the new generations because the new generations are pretty used to this. It's part of, it's like they're, they're playing a game and they understand things better. But of course, this all entails further investment and longer implementation times. Technology also is also included in training. And as you know, we are going to strongly encourage automation and digitization. Automation, to our understanding, involves working with machines or autonomous cars, AGVs, in order to boost productivity. So what's the business case in Mexico? The current situation is slightly different because AGVs prices are falling on a daily basis, as well as labor, the cost of labor in Mexico is increasing on a daily basis. The uh, difference between us and our colleagues is that we, our processes are not necessarily so complex. So we work in three shifts per day with three operators and uh, th that works for us to build a business case in Mexico. Uh, perhaps it won't take us a year, but we also have to focus on costs when it comes to turnover or personnel retention. So it, it will become a business case. It will become the future. Perhaps we will not be able to connect everybody to everything, but with simple solutions, we will have improved solutions. Digitization, as I was saying, includes the use of Google Glasses or picking solutions to avoid mistakes. And remember, it is the system that has to lead people and not the other way around. In this case, These are picking solutions. We have pick by point, for instance. And it's better used in combination. There is a focus on the part number. So, so if the light turns on, I'll take it and we'll combine it with pick by reader. 
I have to move my hand through the virtual window for confirmation because the system won't follow if I don't do so. There's pick by frame or pick or put by frame where you put a frame to the sequences dolly. The light turns on again to describe the part and it can all be controlled over radar. I was capable of running that process after a couple of minutes. That means that you don't need much training. It's just a light that turns on to signal the process. So we are strongly fostering these uses as long as our customers allow us to participate and to use these processes. As a summary, I have to say that our approach to meet the requirements, both in terms of quantity and demand, has to do with our focus on people and the use of technology to make things simpler for the people to have an efficient system to ensure stable operations. This is all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention. OK, muchas gracias. Again, uh, I think the fact that um, Volker probably could have delivered that presentation in German, and many of the Mexicans here would have understood it because they are so educated, and, 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 and especially in this sector, uh, whether we're also talking about engineering and, and, and in other areas. Um, and the training, though, is obviously a key issue, and it's good to see, uh, again, companies with global processes and, and systems that, that can be brought here, um, and with the right training and, and preparation, um, obviously this can succeed very much in Mexico, which, which is a good reminder to, to tell you what what Louis mentioned earlier that um, we have a student session this afternoon in the, in the, in the same room as lunch at 2.30. At uh, we'll have some, uh, some students coming in to learn a bit more about the sector, so anybody who kind of wants to talk directly to the next generation should, um, should, should come there as well. Thanks again to all of our panelists. I think, I think you really, again, touched upon many of the sort of issues that we had in mind when we talked about premium, premium logistics, sorry, premium manufacturing. Although it's probably important to say, okay, whether you're building a BMW or an Audi or, or other, other brands, many of the many of the things we discussed are, are indeed applicable and, and will help Mexico develop to the next level. Um, I, we realize we've been running late, and so um, you know, lunch was meant to start a little while ago, but we, we, we don't want to eliminate the chance for questions. So we'll let questions for about 10 minutes or so before we go down to lunch, um, and with including this a few on the app if, uh, if anyone wants to add, ask that way. But we'll always give preference to the room. So if there's anybody who would like to ask our panel a question, we'll have mics going around. So you can just put your name, uh, say your name and company. Uh, here we'll start at the front. It can be in English or Spanish. Or indeed, again, it can be in German. But we'll keep the answers to uh, English or Spanish on stage. <laughs> this is a question for the panel. Uh, Peter, doctor, you have been in Mexico for almost three years or more. If you have to do something different based on your experience now, what that would be? Dealing with logistics, dealing with people, dealing with the government, security, transportation. What would, would you do differently? <laughs> sorry, for the, sorry for the question, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh... That's a, a difficult question. Um, well, it's also difficult to, to give an answer for that because uh, many of the challenges uh, which we were facing uh, to, um, they were already as a risk in our view um, that they all, nearly all have occurred. It's a uh, also something which we could count with. Um, what we will do different. First of all, I think there are some uh, infrastructure uh, bottlenecks in this country which we knew that they exist and uh, 
because we were very, very, um, all our energy we have focused on to build up the factory, uh, we, have, we have accepted this risk and we have accepted it. And we haven't uh, uh, searched a different solution for that. That's maybe what I would do different. For example, Veracruz. I, if, if I would have now uh, the task to set up this project again, I wouldn't set only on Veracruz. Um, this is something what I would do different. Um, I would maybe also uh, put even more energy into supplier uh, support. We have had one, we have more than 170 suppliers in Mexico and in, uh, in uh, the Northern American region, but mainly in Mexico. We have had already uh, a big team who is supporting since 2013 all the uh, development of the suppliers. Um, I think if we would start the project today, I would set more, um, more energy there. And one very important point, um, I would give enough time to everybody who is working in this project to learn Spanish at the beginning. Because that's what we, we haven't had. <laughs> Many of us haven't had any chance and then when we were in Mexico, actually the pressure is already, it, it was so high that uh, uh, I don't know where we could have taken the time uh, to learn the language. And because of this, all on high level, we everybody speaks German or English. And uh, I think uh, that's also a little bit of, you have obstacles because you don't, you don't reach immediately the workers, you don't reach immediately um, uh, every uh, human resources in your factory. And uh, that, that is the major change, I think, what I have done, or what I would do. Thank you. Honest answers. Uh, Dr. Koch probably taking down notes there uh, to, uh, <laughs> to learn. Uh, it's all very good points, perhaps, perhaps especially on the Spanish one. Here we are, a, a, a panel of, of, of German, okay, living in, in Mexico, and, and maybe next year from Audi we'll have uh, a Mexican manager here to, to, uh, to speak and, and give some perspectives, as, as I'm sure the development kind of continues down this path as well. Uh, a question from my side, because um, most of the panelists are, have a big ambitions for um, sort of systems, global systems, whether it's connected supply chain or a global con or a control tower. Um, and also you've implemented many, many advanced sort of systems, whether it's the RFID side or, or other kinds of IT. Peter, when you first presented here three years ago, I specifically remember you pointing to some challenges around telecommunications and, and broadband connectivity. And I wonder, are, are those still challenges that you face? Are there other challenges in implementing such IT systems in Mexico, kind of taking from a global standard in terms of you know, connectivity with carriers and suppliers, and, and, and uh, you know, if maybe you can give us a sense of, of whether that is a challenge or how, how Audi has overcome that, and maybe if we can have that perspective from the other panelists as well. Okay, if you specifically ask with regard to transparency over the entire supply chain, connected supply chain, I think there's a good base over here, and we find partners with a similar or the same kind of status where we can set and, and bring the, all the data together. I think there are even some advantages within the NAFTA region compared to Europe. Uh, transport, you typically have in Europe high transport uh, service providers, but who are delegating quite a lot of the things to really very small transport service providers. And it's not unusual to have 300 or 400 different transport pro service providers coming into one plant. Mm -hmm. So here it is more the warehouse on wheel, huge service providers, just a few of them. And so I think there are even some chances to implement these digitalization issues quicker here in NAFTA compared to Europe. Any other comment? Okay. Any other questions from, from the audience? One right in the front here. Hello, Ivan Cisneros from Boca Group. Talking about the software and IT tracking systems, uh, the trend is to create at home 
these uh, systems or there is a, a standard that you are implemented, implementing? Uh, the question is, IT systems are developed at home? You asking me? Yes. <laughs> of course, we made a lot of, in the central function of BMW Group Munich, we made a lot of market research, what is available? What are proprietary solutions so far from service providers and to what amount do they cope with our requirements? We came to the point that it's really crucial to have the data availability at BMW because we don't just want to have transparency about which box is in which uh, truck at which area of the, of the world. We also want to make the analyst uh, with our <coughs> material on stock in the plant, on transport and other service provider on other modes and bring these all together. Um, I think the overall solution is not a general solution at the moment, which will be identical to all the premium car manufacturers, but I think more and more industrial standards will develop. So it's not a closed solution just and only for BMW, of course. We will have the system, we will have the data, we have the analyzing, but we strongly try to utilize existing software packages available on the market. Okay, thank you. Uh, probably the last question, we have uh, a question that came in on the, via our, our app earlier. Uh, it's, probably, it's probably for Peter to start, and maybe Dr. Koch can comment. Asking how significant is the rail, trans is rail transportation, uh, both for inbound and outbound? So perhaps, Peter, can you give us a sense of how much rail material moves into the plant and then how, how, much, how much of the vehicles move out by rail, perhaps particularly compared to short sea to the US? And Dr. Koch, what's the sort of preliminary plan from BMW's side? What would, what would your expectation be in terms of how much you use rail? Will you start? Yes, I will start. Okay, with the, I have shown to you as well we use rail transport for the um, vehicle, for the uh, completed vehicle transportation to the ports or to the U.S. borders. Um, it's also, we have a major uh, part of it, so 80% of our cars are running first uh, by rail. For the inbound, it was a very important strategical setup for me at the beginning of the project. I wanted to have dedicated trains for all containers from the port of Veracruz to our plant. We have also a very good infrastructure. We have an, uh, a direct connection to our container yard uh, via rail. And unfortunately, we are not able to get a, a business proposal uh, which is competitive to get the containers by rail mm. uh, to us. Mm. We have had some, you know, we have had many, many discussions about it, but up to today, we do not have a competitive uh, possibility uh, where we can use this uh, solution. I would like to, but we do <laughs> not use it yet. I can still hope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, for BMW, uh, starting with inbound, roughly 90% is coming in by truck, especially here, NAFTA area, overseas material, we have an intermodal concept, getting it by shipment to the ports and then with railroad to a container yard just 10 kilometers outside of our plant and then taking it in the last 10 kilometers to our plant. On the outside, the ratio is the other way around. We strongly intend to have 85% of the distribution via railroad. And then there we have two options, either for the central area of the United States going really three via railroad to the United States to Canada, or, and or going to the ports, Veracruz, Manzanillo, and then short sea trek to the north. Okay, thank, thank you for that. Um, and we'll probably have to leave the questions there just because we want to get to lunch, the rider hosted lunch. Uh, firstly, before we, we go, let me thank our panel, panelists for some great presentations and observations.
If you want to read more about Audi, for example, globally, we have some articles in, in the current issues of automotive logistics and finished vehicle logistics, including looking at some of the, the kind of AGV systems that Peter highlighted. We're obviously constantly keeping up in, in touch with these executives and their global peers. Uh, in our magazines and websites, and it's on that basis. I just want to make a quick announcement to you, just to update you. you. Many of you would have known me over the last several years as the editor of the Automotive Logistics Group. I moved on from that role now. I have a different focus. I'm concentrating across all of our brands at Ultimate Media. We have magazines and ma manufacturing, logistics, design, and IT. Uh, but more importantly is, is that we have a new editor who is here, and I just want to make sure you all know who she is. Joanne Perry sat up in the front row. If Joanne can just put her hand up there quickly. I promise not to drag her on stage just yet, but we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, Joe recently was a deputy editor on our manufacturing publication, Automotive Manufacturing Solutions, so she definitely knows her way around a plant, and she's getting to grips quickly with logistics. So if you have ideas for stories, interviews, you want to know more, you want other areas of coverage, please talk to Joe, and also the gentleman sat right next to her, Marcus Williams, our features editor. Um, that's our team that's here, so please just wanted to make sure you're, you're, you know them. You won't be totally lost shot of me, I'll still be around, but, but in a bit of a different role. Um, Perhaps most importantly now, we're going to move on to lunch, as I'm sure you're, you're, you're hungry. That's hosted by our, our sponsor, Ryder. And the lunch will be downstairs. You'll have signs. You go right down these stairs, and, and you, we'll guide you there. Uh, we're going to come back in here around 2 for our think tanks. This is where we, we break up into smaller groups, and we'll have several different, different topics. You can talk more intimately, and it'll be led by a moderator. But on that basis, don't leave anything behind. Uh, because we're going to move the tables around a little bit. So please take your, take your bags and jackets and, and, and everything with you, and we will see you uh, down there. And also, just as I said as well, the 2.30 is a student session, so if you want to also check that out, that's, that will be in the lunchroom. Thanks again to everybody. Enjoy lunch. <laughs>